Good morning. When I was a kid, my parents made the mistake of offering me 10 cents per dandelion that I pulled out of our front yard. By the end of the day, I was $30 richer. I don't know if they had second thoughts when they started seeing the garbage bags fill up, um, but uh, they, they didn't stop me in time. And so it uh, worked out very well for me, but it proved something to me personally, and that was that fighting dandelions is kind of ridiculous. You're not going to win against the dandelion. By the time you have eradicated dandelions from your lawn, you'll have a, a, a lawn in which almost nothing will be able to grow. You probably will have poisoned yourself. So I have taken the tactic over time of working with dandelions, and I didn't always know why, but it just struck me as counterproductive to try and pull out every single one of these things when I remember after I pulled them out, two weeks later we looked out in the lawn, I was still $30 richer, but we were already fighting dandelions again. So, in any case, that is the attitude that we tend to take today. We treat dandelions as a weed, but 400 years ago they treated them as a very valuable med medicinal plant. They came over with the Puritans on the Mayflower. And just like the Puritans, they became an invasive species in the Americas and, uh, and kind of took over. And there's, there's no getting rid of them at this point, so we may as well live with them and live with the benefits that they brought over. So these were a valuable enough plant to the early colonists that, that they were willing to bring them over right from the start because they knew things that we have forgotten about this plant. Now I am not an expert on medicinal plants. I try to eat a wide variety of very healthy greens and other plants that many people consider medicinal, uh, but that's not exactly my thing, strictly speaking. However, I'm going to list some of the benefits that the early colonists and, and people as far back as uh, written history in the Western world um, they have thought of dandelions as, as medicine. And so some of the medicinal characteristics that dandelions may have uh, are uh, that they are good for your liver, uh, that they contain antioxidants. Um, dandelions supposedly fight inflammation and can help you control your blood sugar, help reduce cholesterol. Really, honestly, the same kind of great benefits that you get from eating any dark green, leafy green uh, food. So these are something that you can consider adding into your diet if you don't mind the bitter flavor. <clears throat> so this morning I am drinking what people call dandelion coffee. It doesn't have any coffee in it. What it is essentially is the roasted roots of the dandelion plant. Um, and cut up and then ground into a, a, at least in my case, I grind it into a very fine powder that I can then use to make a beverage that tastes similar in flavor profile and bitterness to coffee. So I even add cream to my, uh, my dandelion coffee. So um, in any case, I drink it more because I like it than because it has medicinal properties, but it definitely makes, when I drink it, I definitely think about that and I think, you know, maybe I'm growing something good for myself. I don't really know. But, uh, but from what I understand, dandelion isn't one of those things you have to be cautious about eating um, and drinking, as in this case. So, so it also has benefits in your yard and in your garden. And so, you know, we think about the, the potential medicinal benefits, the benefits as a leafy green food that you can eat and you can steam the leaves. They're best harvested early in the spring before they turn bitter. Uh, you can eat the flowers, you can eat the roots. Um, so it's a very useful plant. But this also has uh, uses in your garden and in your yard. So one of the great things that dandelions do is they help 
ease the compacted soil. So they send down a very deep tap root, which can go quite a ways down. From what I understand, it can go several feet down. I have never found one longer than a foot or so. But uh, these roots help to break up compacted soil. So it will often be one of the first plants that manages to uh, take hold in very compacted soil. So it will tell you something sometimes about your yard if you see certain areas where the dandelions are doing well, but the grass isn't, it may be a little more compacted there. Uh, so it could be a signal to you to just learn something about your yard. Second, it, it helps to actually break up the compacted soil. Third, it brings up nutrient from the subsoil. So I actually try to plant or leave some dandelions in my garden because what they do is their roots will reach down further than the roots of some of my plants, bring nutrient up from the subsoil, deposit it around them, and so can be a helpful uh, plant in that respect as a kind of a, a bioaccumulator of nutrient from deep down and a, a nutrient pump, if you will, bringing those nutrients up and depositing them around the, the dandelion itself. So that's another great benefit. Also, they are uh, good for uh, pollinators. They help tr attract pollinators to your garden. So there's really, aside from the fact that they are uh, persistent, I, I don't see the downside to having dandelions in your garden, especially because if you have them in your garden, you have another source of food. And so it may not be a food that appeals to you, but if you like coffee, you should definitely try dandelion uh, coffee. I, I really enjoy it. it. And when you're roasting it, it has this brilliant um, chocolatey sort of smell to it. So it's uh, until you've roasted dandelion greens, you don't understand, uh, dand until you've roasted dandelion roots, you won't really understand why I like it so much, but the smell is really incredible. Once you smell that, I think you'll probably look forward to trying the coffee beverage, um, you know, a little bit more. So one of the other uses that I have for dandelions, I don't know if I'll do this again in the future, but last last summer I made dandelion wine and it's uh, it's it was it was completed with this fermentation process in December so I've been letting it sit a little longer I've recently started to try it and I can't say that I am in love with dandelion wine and I didn't make the mistake that a lot of people talk about we're leaving too much of the green uh, in the wine itself in fact, I probably personally would have liked a little bit more of that bitter bite. Instead, what I got was a um, almost like a an herbal brandy, uh, like a digestif kind of uh, cordial that you might serve after dinner. And that's kind of how it turned out, more than what I had sort of hoped for, which would be a dry white wine. And I don't know, obviously there are probably different recipes but, but that's what I came up with. Uh, and so I'm testing it as, a, as an after dinner drink to see if it's an aid to digestion. Maybe I'll fall in love with it, but as of the moment, I'm not in love with dandelion wine. Uh, so every part of this plant has different uses and it has that interesting characteristic for your garden of bringing up nutrients from the subsoil. And honestly, if you, can start considering this a food, you'll find that you don't have too many dandelions. In fact, it's very difficult to have too many dandelions when you start thinking about them as a food. So just a way to change your perspective on it and uh, reframe it a little bit. Now I have to say, if I had to choose a plant for my coat of arms, it would be the dandelion because it is tough it's resilient, it keeps coming back, you can't keep it down, but it's also good for you. So that's how I like to think of myself, I guess. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you think this video was good for you. I hope you give me a thumbs up and please leave some comments down below letting me know how you use dandelions, 
uh, whether you like the flavor of dandelions, whether you've tried dandelion coffee. And if you think maybe you can make this a part of your food routine for the upcoming season, maybe stop trying to fight them, start trying to appreciate them. Also, please check us out at the foodforestgardenclub.org website. We are getting together every couple of weeks. We're talking about our plants, talking about gardens, talking about ideas we have for the upcoming season and things that have worked for us in the past. So uh, if you want to get involved, uh, sign up for the website, and then you can join us on Zoom chats and things like that, and, uh, and we can learn from each other. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this video and have yourself a great day. Thank you.